Hello guys, and welcome back to 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, so much crazy stuff happened. Uh, first of all, detail that some of you may not have noticed. Uh, there was this part where Snake talked about the Gonsfeld experiment, or at least he mentioned it. And he was like, Junpei, have you ever heard of the Gonsfeld experiment? And Junpei was like, yeah. Which is really weird, because... When we went down the route to get the submarine ending, Seven asked us the same question, and we said we had never heard of it before. Even crazier than that, though, is... Because that's, like, normal compared to the fact that we heard that nine years ago, a girl named Akane died. And if that Akane is our Akane, then who is our Akane... Because, like, we thought that Jun was Akane Kurashiki, so if the Akane who died was Akane Kurashiki, then who the hell is Jun, you know? So, yeah, I can't wait for... I think this might be, like, the second to last episode, because I'm pretty sure it's just... Uh, because we just have this puzzle, and then we go straight to the ending. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to cut up the sections after the final... Uh, this puzzle... Uh, into multiple parts or something like that. I'll try to keep it in, into one episode. But whatever. Uh, let's just get into this. <clears throat> the door opened, and Junpei and the others leapt through it. But no sooner had they done so than the clang of metal on metal rang out behind them. They spun around. The door they just come through had slammed shut. Junpei grabbed hold of it with both hands and pulled with all his strength. <sighs> Damn it! It looks like it locks automatically. Is there any other way out? Well, there's another door over there on the right. There's a card reader next to it. It's got a red light on it, though, so I'm pretty sure it's locked, too. But there is a card reader, right? Yeah. Then perhaps if we find a key card, we could open the door and leave. Well, yeah, that might work, but... Hey, wait a minute! Are you saying we're gonna have to search through this room for one little card? Oh, man. They took a second to look at the room they'd found themselves in. It was filled with piles upon piles of all manner of things. The only word that could describe it was chaotic. It was like a tornado had passed through, followed by a giant who had picked up and shaken the entire room a few times. Junpei's heart fell. Clover and Seven looked as though they were about to cry. Well, we can sit down and wait to die if that's what you'd prefer. I rather doubt that, however, so it'd be wise to start looking. We haven't much time. Let's find that key card. Oh, and the Neptune key as well. We won't be able to get through the hallway without it. All right then, let's begin. Seek a way out. I forget if it shows us that any time after this. I think it might. Um, anyway, one thing that I kind of regret about this LP, and it's something that I should probably do when I let's play the sequel to this game, is that I didn't show enough funny dialogue. I should have examined more things and shown off a bunch of funny dialogue like that. Uh, there are a couple that I just remember off the top of my head from this room. If we go ahead and look at this right here. Look, Junpei, the rust on here looks like Elvis's face. Uh, uh yeah. How exciting. The back of that huge machine. Clover says she can see Elvis's face in it. The back of that huge machine. Clover says she can see Elvis's face in it. The back of that huge machine. Okay, seriously, where the hell is it? I can't see it. Really? See, there's a nose right there, and that's the hair. Y yeah, sure. There's nothing there. <laughs> back of the huge machine. I can't see the fr front of it from here. I think that's it. Also, if we click on this pipe... A pipe! Great. Maybe if you click on it from here? A pipe! 
A pipe! A pipe! There are three pipes here. Give me a P! Give me an I! Give me a... Give me a P and an E! What's that spell? Pipe! What the hell are we doing? <laughs> This uh, game has a lot of pipe gags. I believe I, ref I mentioned this earlier, but whenever you see a pipe in an escape room, be sure to check it a couple of times. Junpei makes a couple of jokes about like squeezing into the pipe and like getting out of the ship that way. Anyway, enough goofing around. Let's go ahead and get back to this area over here. Hey Junpei, isn't this an a nautical table? Yeah, I feel like I've seen this before. New material has been added to the file screen. Uh, if you want to look at more funny dialogue, uh, just go to the uh, Zeroscape uh, fan wiki and just like check it, look uh, look at an escape room, and there will be a section called humorous quotes that you can look at and read through. Uh, it's all hilarious stuff, so go check that out. Uh, I believe this is the first thing we want to check on the control panel. What are these buttons do anything? Something on the screen now. What's this? There are 15 cells here with numbers and letters in them. Let me see that. Oh, uh, I see. So whenever you touch a cell, the ones next to it turn on or off. Just gotta use that to make the, the all cells on the right and bottom green. Um... Hey Junpei, I found this piece of paper under that thing. You wanna take a look at it? Do you think this might have something to do with the puzzle? It's a piece of paper Clover gave me. There are a bunch of numbers and letters connected by equal signs on it. Just like she said, this is probably related to the puzzle on the screen somehow. Thanks, Clover. This really helps. <laughs> Alright, let's go back and try again. Anyway, it looks like I just need to make all the cells... The cells all green. <laughs> so we have this thing right here. Uh, so... It's basically the bases that I was talking about earlier, how A is 10, or previ it was previous episode that we talked about that. Uh, A is 10, B is 11, all the way up to L, which is 21, which is what we need. So basically, we have a mixture of numbers and letters here, um, and you need to press them in a certain way uh, that gives us the digital root for A, L, L, as well as A, L, L. Um, or at least they add together to make those. So, go. So for the solution for this is top right, top middle, middle middle, bottom middle, bottom right. Then you go top left, top middle, top right, middle right, bottom right. And then bottom middle. And there you go. You did it, Junpei! You're so smart. You seem to have done an excellent job and solved the puzzle. Just what I would have expected of you, Junpei. Hey, come on, you're embarrassing me. Whoa, whoa, don't get cocky, kid. We don't got time for that. Look at this. Check out the right edge of the, the control panel. The lids, the lids lit open and something came out. If we click on this little badge right here, we got the cross emblem. A metal plate shaped like a shield. There's a cross engraved on it. The thing is cross carved on it. So just keep this in mind for later. Uh, we're gonna do something with it. Uh, if we go ahead and click here, we have, you saw the compass right there, and we have a map of the world here. Monitor is part of this machine. It's really dim though. It's got a map of the world on it, but I can barely see it. Um, to click here, maybe? Junpei, there's a wheel over there, over here. Uh, that should work like a steering wheel. Sterling? No, I'm too poor for that. Stealing? That might solve my money problem, but I'd rather not. Oh, right. You were in the chart room, weren't you? There was a puzzle like this in the wheelhouse. I can figure out how this one works by just looking at that compass. I figured this will work just like that other one. The other one? The important part is the nautical chart we just found. I have to match it up with, with the directions on the compass with the lines on the nautical table. I used the steering wheel in the wheelhouse, but this time I think I'm going to use the wheel attached to the side here. Okay, then show me. Now! Of course. 
Here we gotta run through the, inst the instructions. It looks like probably it's the same as the steering wheel and the wheelhouse did. Just touch the direction I want to turn to, the compass will turn that direction. Then I just gotta press stop when the compass is pointing where I want it to. I'm betting something will happen if I can do it right. Alright, let's do this! So we got the uh, map in the top screen here, so just make it go the directions it needs to. We start off with south. Then we go west. Then we go southeast. Then we go northeast. Then we'd go east. Then north again, and then east. Or then north, then east again. I said that in the completely wrong order. There we go! Yay! You did it, Jinpei! Good boy! Who's a good boy? Ah, knock it off! Hey, we don't have time for screwing around right now. Check out the right side of the monitor. Just kinda slid open and something came out. Oh yeah! I heard a noise, too. You know that big box in the hall by the exit? I think it made a noise. Like something unlocking, you know? A noise, huh? We got the helm emblem. Metal plate shaped like a shield. There's a symbol that looks like a steering wheel engraved on it. This thing is what looks like a steering wheel engraved on it. So, we got mention of this thing in the back here, uh, opening up. If we click on it, metal shutter looks pretty sturdy. It's framed with black and yellow warning t stripes. Alright, let's open it. Holy shit. That is pretty damn creepy. There's a coffin in there. A coffin. A coffin. Oh man. Does Seven think... Yeah, he's all pale. He's thinking the same thing I am. No way. Could this be... I'm sorry, but what's going on? It's a coffin! I wonder if there's a vampire in it. Alright, I guess Clover and Snake don't know the story. Man, I can't bring myself to tell them. Well, in any rate, let's have a look around. It's kind of hard to see with the uh, DS's compression, but it, if you look closely, it does kind of look like the letters uh, A-L-L-I-C-E are printed on it. Metal plaque in the coffin. Snake's touching it. All ice. Ah. The two machines. Holy shit. Man, this is serious. Ah, oh, well, let's, well, let's open it, shall we? Clover, if you could give me a hand. Okay, I got it. Ready? Three, two, one. Ha! Huh. Mm -mm. No luck. Doesn't seem to be ready to open. Yeah, but it's not like it's screwed shut or something. Yes, I believe it's locked in some other way. Hey, Seven, do you think you could open it with your superhuman strength? No, I... I... What's wrong? Uh, I think I'll just pass on this one, okay? What the heck? Very well. We'll just have to give up on the coffin for now. Let's look around the room a little more, shall we? Alice sleeps in a small chamber past the forest of knowledge, beneath the navel of the gigantic. Is that actually true? So, uh, the thing that Snake mentioned about the two machines, we saw the all machine before. Uh, this one over, wait, no. Not that direction. This one right here. Uh, but we didn't see the ice machine. If we go right over here, see what happens when I... Whoa! Well, now we've got something on the screen at least. Huh. What is this? Oh, uh, wait a minute. I saw something like this when I figured out that Morse code puzzle back in the communications office. Morse code? Yeah, the, the dots on here look like the dits for Morse code. There's two dots on the first line, four on the second, and one on the last. Uh, I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, perhaps you should give it a shot anyway. Alright, I'll try. Before I do that, though... Maybe I ought to run through the instructions. If I just tap the button, it'll enter a dit. Hold the button down, it'll enter a DA. Once we enter our answer, it'll automatically determine if it was the correct answer or not. Alright, let's do this. 
I'm missing something. Give me a second and I'll figure it out. Ah, it's probably... Yeah, it's probably in here. There's something written on these pieces of paper. Looks like we've got three sheets of the stuff. New material's been added to the file screen. Let's check it out. Okay, Morse code charts. There we go. So, we saw the coffin that said all ice. And the first uh, computer had all on it. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to spell ice. Uh, so... And if you'll look, it actually lines up perfectly. So the I is two dits. Uh, the C is four uh, things long. It's uh, da, dit, da, dit. And then E is one dot. Or, or dit, sorry. Anyways, uh, now we're going to go ahead and enter it onto the computer. Figured out what you're supposed to enter here, Junpei. Hmm, it looks like the word that's supposed to go here is three letters. It's got three lines, and I think each line is one letter. I see. Well, if that's the case, then perhaps the letters you need are made up of two symbols, four symbols, and one symbol, respectively. That's probably the terminology I should have used. After all, isn't that what you just said? One line is two spaces, the next is four, and one is a single space. I see. So in other words, I've got to enter either the dots or the dashes. So he does call them dots. Okay, so my brain is weird. Uh, two, four, one. So it would seem. Maybe I would run through the instructions. If I just tap the button, it'll enter a dit. Hold the button down, it'll enter a da. Once we enter our answer, it'll not automatically determine if it was the correct answer or not. I can also switch through the code sheets I've got by touching the three icons over on the right. All right, let's do this. And now we have this handy for us. I don't know why we have all of these pages, because we only need the first one. I guess just for the sake of completeness. There we go, that's the good noise. I see, it seems you've solved the puzzle, Junpei. Excellent work. The answer was ice. How did you know? All I had to do was listen to the sounds the machine made. After that, it was trivial matter to decode them. Ah, yes. I believe I heard a noise from somewhere on the, on the right of the device after you solved the puzzle. It sounded rather like something sliding open. Do you see anything that could have made that noise? Yeah, that's true. Ah, yes, one more thing. I heard a sound from from behind the shutter. Perhaps the coffin is unlocked now. What? First, we'll grab the code emblem. See, weird pattern. I don't know how to describe it. Considering where I found it, it's probably a code. I wonder if this is a code that you can decipher somehow. Someone in the comments, let me know what it means, if it is a code. Alright, fine, I'll open it. Okay, Junpei, you can do this. It's just a box. Just a box. Oh, holy shit, this is a coffin. There's gonna be something horrible in there, I just know it. Okay, okay, deep breaths. <sighs> Here we go. <laughs> oh man, there's nobody in there. Shit, I can't believe I was scared of something like that. What do you mean, nobody? Are you expecting someone to be in there? Eh, long story. Just ask Junpei about it sometime. Well, just like Seven said, there's nobody in there. There is something in there, though. Well, two somethings, actually. What is that? There are two things on the bottom of the coffin. Looks like we've got a plate with an emblem on it, and... The Neptune Key! Yes, we finally found it! Now we can get through the hallway! That's correct, Clover. But we do need to get out of the room first, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, let's get the hell out of here as quickly as possible. I don't have any objections to that. I don't think we'll use the Neptune Key in this room. It's really important, though, so I'll keep it in my pocket for now. As far as the other thing goes... So we have these four emblems. Uh, there's one computer that I haven't touched yet. I had to, had to wait for a bit to make that close. But we have these four indents here that look exactly like the emblem emblems that we have. 
First thing we want to do is grab the helm emblem. Let's just drop the emblem of the steering wheel in here. Whoa! Well, now we got something on the monitors at least. What's that? Looks like some kind of puzzle. I wonder if these are the rules. Here, I'll read them to you. When you touch a numbered area, the area will be selected and it'll turn blue to indicate this. Touching a numbered ball after selecting the, an area will cause the ball to be moved to that area. However, you cannot move the red balls. You can only move three to five in balls into a single area. Press the check button once you've moved all of the balls, except for the red ones, which you cannot move. The digital root of... You know, that parenthesis just made me think of something. Uh, I can't- I probably can't do it now because this is like the last explanation for things, but I think it would would have been funny if I read all of the, um... All of the explanations for puzzles in Papyrus's voice from Undertale. Uh, because that parenthesis right there just seemed like... It reminded me of that one tile puzzle, uh, from, like, the beginning of Snowden. The digital root of the balls in an area must match the number for that area. And that's it. Uh, I still don't really get it. Whatever. Like they say, practice makes prefects. Let's give it a shot. Don't you mean practice makes perfect? Hey, let's see you solve the next one. Then you can make fun of me. So for this first puzzle, what we want to do is put 4, 5, and 6 into the 6 area. And 1, 2, 3, 7, and 8 into the 3 area. Okay, this is it, right? But nothing's happening. There are still three more indentations left empty. I imagine something will happen when they are all filled. Doesn't that seem likely? One down, three to go. Next one we want to put in is the cross emblem. Okay, let's put the emblem of the, emblem of the cross. Hey Junpei, something just showed up on the screen. The puzzle sure looks a lot like the last one. Yeah, but there's more of those red balls you can't move. The numbers for each are different, too. It looks like it's got the same rules as the last one, though. You sure you don't want to double-check that? N no, I'll be fine. If I get confused, I can just look at the screen over there, right? Anyway, like they say, a picture's worth a thousand wards. Let's give it a shot. Isn't that a picture's worth a thousand wards? Hey, shut it. At least I'm trying, alright? Next one. In the 1 area, we want to put 2, 3, 5, and for the 7 area, we want to put in 4, 6, 7, 8. That's awesome, Junpei! There's only 2 left now! You can do it! The third one we want to enter in is the Code Emblem. Put in the emblem with a secret code. Yeah, this puzzle looks a lot like the last one. Looks like the puzzles are the same, though. Don't you think you should double-check it? Come on, this is the third time I've done this. Uh, I'll, it'll be fine. So this... Uh... Um... If you can't think of anything clever, please don't strain yourself. You might hurt something. Ah, shut up! Just give me a break, alright? I'll think of something. So for this one, we have two sevens. For the first one, you want to pin four, five, seven. And for the second one, two, six, eight. Excellent work, Junpei. You've only got one left. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Of course, there's only one left to put in. The fire emblem. Or the coffin emblem, excuse me. Let's see what happens when I put the emblem of the coffin into the indentation. That joke sucked, I am so sorry. This is the fourth one. This puzzle looks a lot like the last couple. I think this one is probably the last one. Once we solve this puzzle, I'm sure something will happen. Alright, I'll solve it in no time. Didn't have anything funny to say for that one. Uh, for the eight, you want to put in... I'm pretty sure all of them. And then nine is all good, because nine is equal to zero in, the, in terms of the nonary game. Huh? Where did that noise come from? Underneath the keyboard? Way to go, Junpei! You answered all the questions! Damn, Junpei, good job! Hey, did you hear something just now? 
Yes, I heard that as well. From the bottom left corner of the desk, I believe. Let's open this bad boy up, and... A picture? And we're gonna see what's on that picture in the next episode. I know I'm kind of leaving you on a cliffhanger here, but we're getting close to the end of the game, so there's gonna be a lot of that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!